Say gone. Big house here. As I was traveling out in the Midwest, mostly Montana, I ran into a reservation of the Blackfoot Indians. Now, I've connected up with a couple of photos, uh, public domain photos of the Blackfoot Indians. And these are taken, this one's taken in like 1926. And this is of the Blackfoot leaders at Fort McLeod. But understand the Blackfoot were probably the fiercest fighting natives and mostly feared all across the United States. So you have great warring tribes like the Apache and the uh, Sioux, different nations of the Sioux were warriors. And understand back a thousand years ago, you had warriors that fought all the time, like the Mohawks were warriors. I'm Mohawk. Anyway, uh, then you had hunters, gatherers, and whole tribes that were medicine people, like the Pueblos. But they were protected in confederacies by people like the Blackfoot and the Mohawks and the Apaches and uh, the Sioux. They had warrior clans or tribes, and this is probably one of the most fiercest. And the Blackfoot had such a reputation of horsemanship later in years that they claimed they could fire up to two arrows um, and up to eight arrows in a minute from a horse, uh, riding a horseback, bareback, from under the horse's neck. And this is shooting an arrow. Uh, that's just a story, so you have to take that with a grain of salt. But understand the Blackfoot Indians were unbelievable horsemen and warriors and for all time, probably the most feared. If you had done anything against any of the tribes under their protection, you knew you were going to answer to the Blackfoots. This was one of the methods that the Blackfoots hunted buffalo. And buffalo, of course, was a mainstay for meat and food and protection and clothing and covering for their teepees and protection for their horses. They built armor out of the hides and you name it. And they claimed they used everything on the buffalo except the squeak, which is the noise it makes. Now, I ended up in Montana at the Blackfoot Indian Reservation. I went there to do interviews and see who I could meet as far as historians and catch any local legends and do interviews. But I was totally uh, frightened off the reservation. And I try not to scare too easy in life. But I'm telling you, it was uh, an experience I will never forget. In fact, one of the restaurants in Montana that I went in for lunch... Uh, thank heavens, not looking like an Indian. It had a sign on the door, literally, and this is back just 10 years ago, that said, no Indians served here. I got a picture of the uh, sign, but it never came out or developed. It was lost for whatever reason. Now understand the Navajo were a very nomadic tribe and they traveled anywhere they pleased because of their reputation, but they followed the massive herds of buffalo. And this is them that have packed up a teepee. You can see the teepee in the background. And this is actually where the stereotype of an Indian living in a teepee. Uh, only the Midwestern ones lived in teepees. Everybody else that I know of that I've found lived in huts or hogans or wigwams. Uh, because they were easy to build and quick to move. The teepee is a whole story in itself. And I'm having trouble getting someone to narrate the story of a teepee, how to build one, how many how many uh, uprights there are, uh, how the doors work, how the flaps work for cooking, and double teepees for the winter, but it's almost impossible because the story is sacred. So I will still try to hunt it down, but uh, no promises. But understand that they could take these teepees apart and move an entire 
tribe overnight when they needed to move. So understand that this teepee and whole nation groups, whole nations of natives could be disassembled, packed up, and put on horseback on a skid overnight. And we're talking hundreds of these teepees all moved immediately to another location to follow the big game or to f set up villages for protection away from the wars and the running of other tribes. Here is one of the great chiefs of the Blackfoots. I don't even attempt to pronounce his name. It's something like Chief Atitska, but a great uh, Blackfoot chief. And this is the way he would be traditionally dressed uh, to present himself at a ceremony or present himself to maneuver a battle. And this is one of my all-time favorite photos of a black... This is... Um, oh, goodness. I believe his name was Bull Bear, but he was an interpreter for the Blackfoot Nations to both other nations and to the government. And this picture was taken like in 1907. One of my all-time favorite people, but look at that face and the skin. This man spent his life fighting for Indian rights. And I do believe his name is Bull Bear, but one of my all-time favorite photos ever taken. Incredible person.